From Carry the Load, these are lessons from the front. Stories of service and sacrifice from our military, veterans, first responders, and their families. Well, we first shot it into the air like you'd be shooting a rifle, you know. You got a great big gun off of your air tank, I mean off of your flamethrower, so you're shooting it like you're shooting a rifle. Well, you wouldn't go anywhere because the air resistance, when it came off, it came out of the gun, the air resistance would catch it, so it would just roll into a big ball and not go anywhere. So he trained us to teach, to shoot at about 15 yards on the ground in three to four second bursts and make a great big orange flame ball and it would roll. Well, first of all, for all my Top Gun Bubba's out there, you're on the record now, on camera, as saying that the Blue Angels was a step further. So, <laughs> so okay, I can't wait a minute. Educate I can't wait me to then. get back to Pensacola. <laughs> you're you're going to have to educate me. Is that uh, is Top Gun and and the Blue Angels are those seen as two different paths? They are. They're they're two different paths. I mean, they involve... after 150 flights, we're down to 150 feet. The diamonds work in 24 to 36 inches apart. And there's a lot of trust that comes with being. Did you ever at any point think to yourself, what in the hell am I doing up here? Good. I mean, you look, you look Uh, this way, you look that way, you look up and you've got, you've got all this metal and potential destruction surrounding you with one false move. Yeah. I'm not thinking of it as destruction. I'm thinking it's pretty cool. (laughs) You actually took your medal of honor and gave it to your unit. Is that correct? It is. It, it's a heavy responsibility. And for me, to wear it is embarrassing. I am embarrassed of myself to wear it. Because Why? I, I, because Why I on earth could because, you be embarrassed? Because I know the biggest, and I know the bravest, and I know the fastest, and I know the strongest, and I know those that went out there every single day, and I know those times where I didn't want to go out, and we had to go out, and I promise you I was forced out because that's what they do. And it wasn't me. And, and to wear a recognition of our nation's finest can only be worn if we wear it. And this, the crazy thing is, is it only fits around one neck. Is he, it sounds like he's the guy that you would, if he called and said, hey, I need you to be here, you'd do it. I'm bringing the shovels. And doing it without question. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you were to yeah. put that into a phrase or a, or a word as to why, what would that phrase or word be? trustworthy I, I trust that guy there, everything about him and it's a pretty gray area especially in the marine corps of a definition of what a bad leader is because there's a lot of amazing leaders yes. and so when you get one that's not so great they really they stick out. out and yeah. as marines especially in the infantry we will eat our own for breakfast three to five minutes that seemed like a half an hour and obviously I, you know at the time I, I, I didn't have a family but i can't only imagine uh, what our undercovers go through in times like that. And I've heard different stories from what they've had to go through. You know, how do I talk my way out of this? Uh, you know, if there's a gunfight, I'm on my own for at least, for at least a good five minutes. Uh, it's, it's on you, but I think you get a little bit of a pass. If you ah, a little bit, a little bit. I would imagine the pucker factor involved in landing on an aircraft carrier at night in choppy seas has got to be beyond 10 from 0 to 10. Experience When it gets really poor visibility, bad weather, nighttime, pitching deck, then, yeah, it can get a little, uh, it can get pretty nasty, nasty pretty quick. And every, most aviators have a, a story about, and we call it a night in the barrel, where you're just, you just can't get aboard. For some reason or another, you just can't make it happen, and you, you just go around and around and around until you can finally land. Sometimes that involves going to a tanker to get more gas to keep trying to land. So um, I'm, I'm a grunt. I get it. That's no, no offense taken. Not everyone's story can be made into a movie, but every one of us has a story that should be heard. Our show highlights those stories from the 1% of America who served in uniform, and we translate those stories into lessons that can benefit anyone. Whether it's you or someone you know, I'd be honored to explore the story and the lesson. Please feel free to call me or reach out via LinkedIn.